so we are live you can start now okay good afternoon to all uh, welcome all of you to the ministry of earth science webinar series this is the 32nd in this series i understand my name is s suresh babu from the space physics laboratory of vikram sarabhai space center at the outset i thank ministry of earth science for giving me an opportunity to talk in this webinar series i also thank indian institute of tropical meteorology pune for arranging uh, this platform for this talk so i will go to the talk now i hope this is visible to all of you yes please continue yeah the uh, title of my talk today is aerosol radiative force in your india here i will be presenting some of the important results from the aerosol radiative forcing over india project of isro gbp the isro gbp is one of the science program of isro mainly addressing the geosphere biosphere interaction and the aerosol radiative forcing over india which in short we call arfi the arfi project is one of the main project under the isro gbp so here uh, i am showing a global map of aerosol optical depth at 550 nanometer derived from modis for the period may to july averaged for the years from 2003 to 2050 this uh, particular figure is published in the reviews of geophysics in 2016 uh, on the effect of aerosols the review is on the effect of aerosols on monsoon so here it is shown that it is the superimposed are the locations of the world's major monsoon systems so here i will be talking about the aerosols over south asian region which i have shown in the in a box here the importance of south asian aerosol is which is this is one place where we have the large north south excursion of the itc said in the tropical convergent zone which has a profound influence on the distribution of aerosols over south asian region it was shown very convincingly that whenever the itc said is going to further to the south depending on the excursion the the extent of the southward excursion the aerosol loading over indian region is also getting modulated which was based on the experiments conducted in the past it was it was very convincingly proved so this is one of the important aspect and another important thing is that the periodically changing synoptic air mass we have a continental air mass uh, uh, over the oceanic region uh, around the indian subcontinent during the period from december to february when the air mass is northeasterly which completely changed to marine air mass system when the southwesterly Uh, after the onset of the monsoon when the southwest uh, uh, wind prevails so we have two aerosol system in in between during the pre monsoon time the winds are mainly from the northwestern region where we have the influx of dust from the arabian and even from the saharan uh, desert dust so the aerosol system over the south asian region in general and indian region in particular is 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 highly complex because of the different source processes active during different time frame so since i am talking about aerosol radiative forcing uh, uh, those who are not in this field i will just explain it is radiative forcing is a change of the net radiative flux at the top of the atmosphere due to an external perturbation that has the potential to alter global temperature here in this talk i will be at addressing the external perturbation which is the presence of aerosols in the atmosphere especially over the uh, south asian region or the indian region in particular so the radiative forcing is estimated as the difference between net radiative flux at the top of the atmosphere in the perturbed state and unperturbed or clean atmosphere here it is to be noted that both the magnitude and sign of the radiative forcing values at the top of the atmosphere is very important because the positive radiative forcing implies the warming of the climate system and the negative radiative forcing implies cooling so to estimate the radiative flux we have to have ready to transfer calculations and there are very important parameters in as far as aerosols are concerned while doing the radiative transfer uh, calculation so 
the important radiative uh, properties of aerosols which are relevant for the radiative transfer calculation or estimation for the radiative forcing estimation are the optical depth which is the column content of the mainly the aerosol optical depth which is the column content of the aerosols present in the atmosphere single scattering albedo which determines the the ratio of scattering to the extinction means the the fraction of uh, the contribution of scattering in the total extinction of aerosols in the atmosphere and the phase function which determines the uh, which uh, decides the angular distribution of the scattered intensity and these information are essential informations while addressing the aerosol radiative forcing and uh, the the this particular uh, activity the aerosol radiative forcing over india activity under the isro gbp is trying to address this uh, problem by uh, making a data set over this country so here we have used an integrated approach in our field where we have a network of aerosol observatories uh, spread uh, all over the country and the integrated approach is actually the network of observatories operational over india is has uh, the uh, the main component which generates the valuable data for addressing various scientific questions of importance for this region in addition we have conducted periodic uh, multi platform campaigns uh, over this region which is related to the specific science questions related to aerosol radiation interaction and its correct climate implications so these data sets are combined with the space borne observation the satellite data uh, for addressing the region specific problems related to the aerosol climate interactions so we have now generated a good amount of data over this region and combined uh, with, and generated aerosol models which can be used for the radiative transfer calculation for the estimation of regional radiative forcing and uh, the which can be used in regional climate models for the climate impact assessment and we have the network spread uh, uh, even over himalayan region which helps us to have the uh, as a preliminary assessment of the uh, impacts over the himalayan region also so this aerosol uh, radiation interaction and its climate impact has uh, profound application in the uh, to the common man we know that aerosol can affect the solar energy input uh, for the uh, daily life and the, it has impact on the himalayan snow and glaciers which has uh, which decides the hydrological cycle in the indo-gangetic plain and uh, there is a lot of discussion on the effect of aerosols on monsoon so with this background uh, i will talk uh, on the the first i will talk about the network of aerosol observatories which is operational over the country now we have about 40 stations now observation uh, uh, observations are available over india this network is operational on a collaborative basis in collaboration with the national institutes and universities in the country where we have a suite of instruments which can make measurements of the parameters which is relevant and important for the radiative transfer calculation. One of the important instruments which is used uh, in this network is the in-house developed multi-wavelength radiometer. This particular instrument is de uh, designed and developed at Space Physics Laboratory, which operates at a 10 wavelength. It measures the direct radiation as a function of zenith angle at these 10 wavelengths. And using the famous Langley technique, we estimate the total optical depth from this system and the aerosol optical depth is deduced from this total optical depth. So we have in this network spectral aerosol optical depth measurement, then the black carbon mass concentration and the spectral absorption co coefficient. This is basically measurement is made on uh, the filter based optical attenuation technique. And at selected stations, we have the spectral scattering coefficients, total aerosol mass concentration and its composition, aerosol size distribution, as well as the short wave and long wave radiation. So this is the base uh, uh, network, which is now uh, one of the largest network in this region and which is currently operational. So one of the main uh, results which has come out from this network of observatories, uh, which uh, operated for last uh, uh, more than two or three decades. Now, some of the stations, we have almost three decades of data sets. So we have compiled these data sets and now recently, uh, a few years back, we have published the long-term trend in aerosol optical depth over our region. So here, the top uh, panel of the graph shows the, the data which is collected, the raw data, and the bottom uh, graph shows the uh, monthly mean average values, uh, averaged over the Indian region is shown. 
where we can see that the long term trend is of the order of 0.005 which looks very small as far as a trend is concerned but it is 0.005 aerosol optical depth increase per year so if you take in a time frame of about half a century or 50 years of time frame the optical depth uh, which is uh, of the order increase of the order of 0.25 to 0.3 which so that shows that over this region and a base state base a uh, value of about 0.3 in a time frame of 50 years the aerosol optical depth can be doubled so this is the importance of uh, this kind of though the values look smaller so to look at what are the possible reasons for this increasing trend we have i have mentioned that we have the, the spectral variation of the aerosol optical depth over different uh, region measurements are available from that we can uh, have a, a first level approximation means first level estimation of the uh, anthropogenic influence by estimating the spectral steepness of the aer spectral aerosol optical depth which we call it as angstrom exponent so if we examine the uh, the uh, the long term variation of the angstrom exponent it shows that it shows an increasing trend which shows that one of the main reasons for the increase in aerosol optical depth is the anthropogenic influence and this is not a constant value for the country it vary from region to region at some of the stations like where it is dust is one of the uh, uh, dominant source instead of uh, an increasing trend it is more or less a constant trend is also so wherever the natural aerosol system dominant the aerosol is uh, the the uh, the aerosol loading is not showing an increasing trend but over urban uh, centers uh, like uh, uh, many of the urban centers the aerosol optical depth is showing an increasing trend so this is this is the uh, one uh, uh, important research which has come out and the role of uh, anthropogenic activities on the increasing and uh, trend so in this background if you look at the uh, the long term trend in the other species so we have the uh, before that i i i should uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, i should uh, mention one of the uh, important names here uh, dr anna mani uh she has made uh, the uh, initiated this measurements uh, the radiation measurements over indian region in 1960s and this has uh, helped us for having a base comparison so uh, she has published a paper in tell us in 1969 on the study of angstrom turbidity parameters from the solar radiation measurements and the angstrom turbidity uh, parameter there is actually nothing but the aerosol optical depth at 1 micrometer so we got an opportunity to compare the values in in, in the present time with about uh, values in about 4 decades back 4 or 5 decades back we can see that there is a large increase in aod over the period of last 5 years and uh, this is probably these are some of the first cut observations uh, which she has made uh long back uh, and which is uh, which is of great use now to have a, an idea about what was our aerosol condition sometime back of course these measurements were made with a, a volts and photometer which was actually a, an initial stage or a, uh, in the primary stage a level uh, uh, measurements of aerosol uh, turbidity which was available at that time but still uh, the data is very useful for this kind of comparison so in this background when aerosol columnar loading is giving showing an increasing trend it is important to look at how the near surface aerosols behaves so we have long term measurements of back carbon over india from trivandrum the in the location in the southern peninsula which is um, uh, we have uh, observation for last two decades or so and uh, for other stations of course the measurements were initiated in the later stages so we don't have such a long time uh, data from other stations but if you look at the uh, long term data from trivandrum we can see that uh, the uh, near surface black carbon is not showing an increasing trend so and uh, in fact it is showing a, a small decreasing trend uh, way it or small is the 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 magnitude of the decreasing trend is of the order of 75 nanogram per meter cube when the absolute value of the concentration is of the order of uh, 2000 to 2500 nanogram per meter cube in the atmosphere so uh, we have several stations in peninsular region we have uh, made an average uh, uh, trend of uh, the black carbon concentration over the peninsular region which is almost comparable to the value which we have seen in the southern peninsula but when we take a, a country wide average we can see that the, re the reduction is uh, quite significant it is almost 
three times more than what we have seen in peninsula, which is of the order of 240 nanogram per meter cube. But we should see that when we take a countrywide average of the black carbon concentration over India, the values also go up to about 5,000 to 7,000 nanogram per meter cube, which is quite high. So compared to the absolute value of black carbon concentration, if you look at the trend values, probably it is uh, may not be that very highly significant, very high value. But if you look at the uh, concentration, the, the trend is negative and it is not showing an increasing trend. So this shows that we th this is a puzzling situation where the columnar aerosol optical depth is showing a convincingly, uh, in convincingly increasing uh, trend. And then the near surface concentration is showing a, a reduce in a, a decreasing trend. So uh, with the help of the space-borne LIDAR observations over this region, the Calypso observations, we tried to examine that what is the ratio, uh, what fraction of the aerosol optical depth above the atmospheric boundary layer, above the, otherwise above one kilometer, is uh, contributing to the total columnar optical depth. And if we see that here, more than 50 percentage of the aerosol uh, the system in the columnar uh, content is above the uh, above one kilometer and if you look at the ratio of aerosol optical depth above one kilometer to the total columnar optical depth if you see this ratio is showing a slight increasing trend which shows that in the warming world uh, the there is an increase in the amount of aerosol getting pumped to the higher altitude and the trend at higher altitudes are not decreasing and in addition to that, if you see the other species, we have shown only the trend of the black carbon in the previous slide. If you look at the uh, other species, though the data has to be generated, now the observations are going on. But based on uh, the uh, other factors the, about the uh, that there is a, there can be a trend in the uh, known BC fraction like sulfate and nitrate, which we need to examine in detail in the coming years. So uh, this shows that there is this study shows that this contrasting uh, behavior of increasing trend in, trend in columnar aerosol optical depth while uh, decreasing or uh, almost a flat trend, decreasing trend in the near surface black carbon concentration shows that there is uh, the significance of the aerosols above the atmospheric boundary layer in the aerosol radiation interaction over our region. So in this background, we have made an attempt <coughs> to study a three-dimensional analysis of the aerosol system over the uh, South Asian region. Here we have uh, used the uh, space-bound LIDAR data from Calixo along with our the network observation. Here we have shown uh, the uh, integrated bascattering coefficient, uh, which is actually the values averaged for each kilometer and put at the middle of that the zero to one is averaged and uh, shown at, at 500 meter and like that to the higher altitudes. So the integrated mass scattering coefficient qualitatively given information on the amount of aerosols available uh, at each altitude. And we can see that the aerosols are uh, uh, spread uh, vertically to the higher altitude, especially during the pre-monsoon season, March, April, May, as well as during during the summer monsoon time when the intense convection taking place over the South Asian region. But if you look at the uh, winter time when the surface is very cool and uh, the atmosphere is quite stable, aerosols are more confined to the lower altitude. But the, for the radiator transfer calculation, the integrated mass scattering coefficient cannot be used uh, as a direct information. So here comes the, the observations from the RFE uh, network, which can be very really useful. We know that when we invert when we invert the LIDAR signals for getting the extinction coefficient, one of the assumed parameters is the LIDAR ratio, which can vary from region to region, especially in a region like South Asian region, it vary over different parts of the South Asian region. So in this context, we have made use of the RFINET observation of columnar aerosol optical depth measured over the different parts of the region. And we uh, estimated the LIDAR ratio uh, by using combining the space-bound LIDAR data with the columnar aerosol optical depth actual measurement. And we could derive the vertical profiles of extinction coefficient over different regions of the country. Like for peninsula region, uh, the eastern part of India, northwestern part of the region, as well as the Indo-Gangetic plain. One of the important observations what we could see here is actually the gradual pumping of aerosols as the time progress from winter to pre monsoon. During winter, we can see that during December, January, February time, 
the uh, boundary layer is atmospheric boundary layer is very shallow the aerosols are confined to the lower atmosphere the aerosols get gradually pumped to the higher altitude as the time progress uh, because of the intense heating taking place during the pre-monsoon time over the Indian region and aerosols are getting pumped. And this pumping is very uh, significant, uh, especially over the regions like uh, uh, Northwestern and Indo-Gangetic Plain region. So to understand that, we uh, averaged the, uh, the extinction coefficient profiles observed over the different locations of the RFINET observations uh, stations. Now we have averaged for the Indian region uh, along a particular uh, and shown along the Indian longitude. We can see that this is a meridional cross section of the aerosol over the Indian region. The black uh, uh, the uh, shows shade shows the uh, elevated himalayan region this is an average picture so here we can see that uh, during the spring time or the pre-monsoon time the aerosols are getting pumped to the higher altitude but during winter uh, during december to february time aerosols are confined to the lower atmospheric region this was we in fact we have observed even uh, before the advent of uh, Calypso, when we had uh, the aircraft measurements as part of the ICAR integrated campaign on aerosol radiation budget studies when we have conducted in 2006 over the Indian region, we found that as we move from Southern Peninsula to the uh, Central India, we could see that there is an enhancement of the aerosols in the free troposphic air. And later with the help of the network of observatories as well as with the spaceborne LIDAR, when we had large amount of data, we could confirm our observations, which we have seen earlier. Now, the, we can see that the take home message is, there is a mini, the minimum vertical extent over the southern latitudes, which gradually increase as we go to the north. And the vertical spread of aerosol is maximum during pre-monsoon time or the spring time. It shows that during pre-monsoon time, the aerosols are getting pumped, basically during March, April, May time the aerosols are getting uh, pumped to the higher altitude. Mostly, most of the studies over the indo gangetic plains, which was reported in literature, if you see, most of the studies are focused on, on the winter time when the atmosphere is stable and aerosols are confined to the lower atmospheric region. But when we, uh, if you look at uh, uh, the pre-monsoon aerosol system, it is mostly resides at higher altitude. Here, the, the aerosol system is not lost in the atmosphere. It got lifted to the higher altitude. So this we can see very clearly in this sphere. By, uh, we can see that the during the pre-monsoon time, we have an umbrella of, it's like a, a thick aerosol layer from about two kilometers to five kilometers present over Indian region, which is obtained by the subtracting the uh, meridional cross section in during the pre monsoon time by taking the difference in the meridional uh, cross section of extinction coefficient during spring and winter. This very clearly shows that during the pre monsoon as well as during the summer monsoon time, the aerosol concentrations are not lost in the atmosphere. The aerosols are getting lifted to the higher altitude. We know that when the aerosol radiation interaction is, is very important when aerosols are moving to the higher altitude because of the availability of a uh, large amount of photons available. And when these aerosols resides above the clouds because of the highly reflecting nature of the clouds, the reflected radiation also, photons also will be available for interaction. And depending on the nature of this aerosol layer, it has very significant climate implications. So to address that, we need to understand the uh, what is the type of aerosol present at a higher altitude layer. So here I, I just added a tutorial slide to know that this Calypso, which is a space-bound LIDAR, which provides, uh, uh, which can which can measure the uh, aerosols, the uh, in two polarization state, both in the cross polarized and the co-polarized signal reflected from the atmosphere will be uh, measured. And the ratio of cross polarized to the co-polarized in density gives the relative dominance of non spherical particles. And this by uh, uh, quantifying the amount of non spherical particles in the uh, aerosol system, uh, which, which gives a an indirect method way to understand the morphology of the aerosols, we can have an uh, uh, assessment about the type of aerosols present in the aerosol system. So uh, using uh, 
the uh, the measured depolarization ratio of the particle and using the depolarization ratio of dust which is known and the depolarization ratio of the non dust we can calculate the backscattering fraction of the dust and from the backscattering fraction of the dust we can estimate the backscattering coefficient due to dust and the dust extinction coefficient so from this information we can calculate the dust extinction coefficient at different layers over uh, the uh, indian region and here we have uh, i have shown the uh, dust optical depth over indian during indian region during the winter basically during the december to february time and during the uh, uh, pre monsoon time frame and this date, uh, the data set used is for the period from 2007 to 17 about 10 years of data has gone into this analysis you can see that during the pre monsoon time the dust optical depth over indian region has uh, increased significantly and if we the the, the uh, over this graph we have i have superimposed the vector wind at 850 hectopascal you can see that during the uh, pre monsoon time the winds are mostly northwesterly which transports aerosol from the desert regions of arabia and even from saharan region to our region so to get the vertical distribution of this dust optical depth what we have done is actually we uh, estimated the dust optical depth at uh, different layers uh, over the Indian region uh, during winter as well as the pre-monsoon time. And when we get the enhancement by subtracting the winter values from the uh, spring values, we could get the enhancement in dust optical depth over Indian region. And we can see that the dust optical depth is going as high as for uh, dust, wire, dust concentrations are significant to uh, the heights as high as about five to six kilometer or so. So during uh, pre-monsoon time, there is a significant amount of dust is uh, contributed to the total aerosol system over pre-monsoon region and which is resides at, an, at, uh, at a height which is about two kilometer to say six kilometer, which is quite significantly existing. But this is only about the, the amount of dust present in that. What is the nature of dust present? So for that, we have parallelly we have uh, we had we were doing the analysis of the uh, infrared dust uh, uh, information basically the infrared radiance uh, obtained from the meteor sat uh, da uh, satellite data was used in this study here based on the thermal uh, the measurements at the thermal channel from 10.5 to 12.5 micrometer the infrared dust difference index were estimated over this uh, northwestern part of indian region uh, the reason for doing this analysis is actually the idda is is actually the radiance depression at the top of the atmosphere resulting from the presence of dust when dust is uh, aerosols are uh, in general quite large in size which uh, reduces the uh, the amount of radiation, the thermally emitted radiation from the Earth, uh, and there will be a depression in the uh, radiance which is received by the satellite sensor. So from this, IDDI are calculated, and the ratio of IDDI to the aerosol optical depth uh, in the mid-visible wavelength gives the measure of the infrared depression per unit optical depth which is actually gives an information on the absorption nature of the dust present in the atmosphere. So from this, we could see that during uh, the, the spatial variation of the dust absorption efficiency is shown here, which shows that the Indian desert dust is more absorbing in nature compared to the Saharan dust, So, which is published in, uh, uh, in JGR. So based on this, we understood that during pre monsoon time, the, there is a significant enhancement of dust pres uh, present in the atmosphere, which is very absorbing in nature. But this are based on the remote sensing method. Now we need to understand what is the type of aerosol present in that. For that, the, the best way to do is the in-situ measurements. And we have conducted a series of in-situ measurements of the vertical profiles of aerosols over Indian region to understand the absorbing nature of aer uh, the, the uh, aerosol present in the atmosphere and its vertical profile. So we have conducted uh, very dedicated campaigns uh, during winter as well as spring. Uh, over the different parts of Indian region, ba basically focused on the Indo-Gangetic plain. So during this uh, vertical profiles of optical properties of aerosols, in situ measurements were carried out using uh, state-of-the-art uh, instruments on board the aircraft of uh, uh, ISRO, maintained by National Remote Sensing uh, Center at uh, Hyderabad. 
So we have uh, uh, using this air, uh, the airborne measurements, we could make the profiling of scattering coefficients, absorption coefficients, and uh, we could derive several parameters from that. So here, the optical properties of aerosols during winter as well as spring is shown. The, uh, the red color uh, is, uh, is for the spring and the blue color is shown for the winter time. We can see that during the observations, we found that during winter, the aerosols are mostly confined to the lower atmosphere. And when we were doing the experiment, many days when we were above the uh, above about 1.5 to 2 kilometers, we could see clear blue sky even over Indo-Gangetic plain during winter. But during pre-monsoon, we can see that, as we have seen in the earlier graphs, with the, uh, the, the, the amount of aerosol pumped to the higher altitude increases. So we had made we have made measurements of scattering coefficient as well as absorption coefficient. And from that, we calculated the uh, vertical profiles of single scattering albedo. From that, it is confirmed what we have shown before based on the space bond observations that aerosols over Indian region are more radiation absorbing in spring compared to that during winter and which is mainly resides above the atmospheric boundary layer. So it, it is not for, uh, as far as the north level pollution is concerned, it may not, may, may not be of much importance during pre-monsoon, but when it comes to the climate impacts, it has very uh, significant implications. So we continued these observations and uh, we, uh, uh, we had made measurements in during the winter as well as spring, uh, during the beginning of the pre-monsoon, which we continued to the uh, later part of the pre-monsoons also, because there was an, ex uh, an excellent experiment over Indian region organized uh, under the umbrella of uh, Ministry of Earth Science called the <coughs> SWAMI, Southwest Asian Aerosol Monsoon Interaction Experiment. During this experiment, This was an, an op opportunity for us to have collaborative experiments with uh, the Swami. So we formed a Swami Ravex. I forgot to mention uh, the, the, the airborne measurements which we have uh, conducted over Indian region was uh, actually designed uh, uh, under the experiment called Regional Aerosol Warming Experiment which was initiated which uh, uh, in 2012. So this we could collaborate between the Southwest Asian Aerosol Monsoon Experiment as well as our experiment and formed a joint Swami Ravex experiment over Indian region. During this uh, experiment, using the same uh, platform uh, from uh, the NRC aircraft, we could make measurements from three stations. So during the Ravex experiments, uh, during 2012 and 13 time frame, we were mainly focusing on the, uh, the vertical profiles of aerosols over Indo-Gangetic plane from multiple stations and to have a regional picture of the absorbing nature of uh, the aerosols. But during the uh, Swami Ravex experiment, we were more focusing on the vertical profiling of aerosols to understand the stable vertical, to get stable vertical profiles over this region. So we have made observations over Bhuvaneshwar, which is representing the eastern part of Indian region. Then the Varanasi, which represents the heart of the Indo-Gangetic plain. And uh, from the Jodhpur, uh, basically representing the northwestern part of the region. So uh, the, the pattern of the measurement is also shown here. From that, we could uh, we have made measurements of uh, the profiles of extinction coefficient, scattering coefficient, and absorption coefficient. And the scattering coefficients are made at a different wavelength. Uh, so that the spectral information will give the information on the size distribution. And we found that uh, over the desert region like Jodhpur, the angstrom exponent derived from the spectral variation is showing the dominance of larger size aerosols compared to that over eastern uh, Indian region, which is shown in blue color. So the, uh, the middle panel shows the middle panel shows the uh, angstrom exponent derived from scattering coefficient uh, a scattered guide diagram between the angstrom exponent derived from scattering coefficient and the angstrom exponent derived from the spectral variation of absorption coefficient. We can see that the aerosol system over the northwestern part of India and the eastern part of India is distinctly different. The green color uh, spots are for the northwestern part of India and the blue colors represent the eastern part of India. Here we can see that the aerosol system is completely different and the aerosol over the uh, IGP is a mixture of these two. And for the western part of India, aerosols are more of larger in size and which is more of natural in origin. When it comes to the eastern part of India, 
which is more of finer in uh, size and which is mainly produced by anthropogenic activities. From the extinction uh, uh, coefficient and the scattering coefficient, we derived the single scattering albedo. You can see that the single scattering albedo, which responds to the composition of the aerosols, shows a distinctly different vertical profiles over different regions of the India. If you look at uh, this, uh, the profiles of single scattering albedo, you can see that the northwestern desert region shows a high scattering nature compared to the eastern part of India and the Indo-Gangetic plain. Even between the Indo-Gangetic plain, central part of Indo-Gangetic plain and eastern India, there is a distinctly different uh, uh, nature of the vertical profile. This shows that the aerosol system has uh, uh, well, is highly varying both regionally as well as vertically. Even in a uh, vertical uh, span of three kilometer, we could see that these, the aerosols are highly absorbing within the atmospheric boundary layer in the central part of Indo-Gangetic plain is becoming more scattering in nature, less absorbing as it goes to the higher altitude. So uh, whereas over the Eastern Indian region, the absorbing nature uh, of aerosols uh, are becoming more absorbing as we go to the higher altitude. So this to examine that, we have made an analysis here to understand the aerosol system, how it behaves at different levels below two kilometer as well as uh, above two kilometer. We can see that the aerosol system present below two kilometer over the indo gangetic plane and above two kilometer is uh, totally different. So uh, now, uh, since we have the uh, observations of single scattering albedo during winter, and during the beginning of pre-monsoon and just prior to the onset of monsoon, which helps us to look at that how single scattering albedo vary over different regions of India as the season changes. We could see that just prior to the onset of monsoon, the aerosol system over Indian region is more absorbing compared to that during winter and pre-monsoon and which will have uh, how it will have the implications in the radiative point of will be examined in the uh, here. Here, the aerosol induced atmospheric warming is examined where based on the observations uh, carried out over the Indian region uh, during the uh, from the network of aerosol observatories and from the different campaign mode observations, we have estimated the aerosol radiative forcing over different regions of India. We have made measurements from uh, uh, from all parts of the India. So we could have the radiative forcing region specific radiative forcing estimations. Here we can see that the radiative forcing uh, is significantly high, especially the atmospheric radiative forcing, which, which shows the uh, aerosol induced atmospheric warming is found to be significantly high during the pre-monsoon time or the spring time or the pre-monsoon time compared to that during the winter. In fact, over almost all the regions of the Indian region, the aerosol atmospheric warming is high during spring compared to that during winter. So uh, here the red color is shows the uh, uh, is it represents the pre monsoon or spring time and the wind the blue color shows the winter uh, time values. So it is important to know that what is what is the cause of what is, which is the species which is responsible for such a change during the spring time enhancement. So uh, this was analyzed here. So uh, we know that the black carbon and mineral dust are. Uh, two major absorbing aerosol species present in the atmosphere. So the atmospheric warming due to uh, dust aerosol during spring uh, is higher than that, that during black carbon, especially over Western and uh, Peninsular India. And we saw that in the previous slide, how dust is getting transported and how it is influencing the Indian uh, region during the pre-monsoon time, and which is actually uh, is uh, mixed with the black carbon and it gets absorption efficiency also increases which shows uh, enhanced atmospheric absorption during pre-monsoon and which is happening at an altitude from about two to five kilometer and which is very important uh, for the radiative uh, transfer calculations and the climate impact assessment. So <clears throat> now so far the the, uh, the in-situ measurements what we have, what I have shown here is based on the measurements carried out from uh, the aircraft, which is, uh, which was actually a low, low flying aircraft. Uh, and we were operating the aircraft in an unpressurized mode. So we could make measurements in the first three kilometers of the atmosphere. And it is very important to have measurements even above that. So uh, we have used a platform uh, from the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, we have an excellent facility at Hyderabad where we can make measurements of aerosols in the entire uh, troposphere as well as uh, the stratosphere up to about 35 kilometers. So here 
we have uh, uh, basically focused on the profiles of black carbons. We have seen that the uh, there is a, LIDAR is a, a very good tool to profile the atmospheric aerosols, which can give the information on the scattering aerosol, basically, or the dust aerosol based on the depolarization. But to derive the black carbon, uh, we, we need to have in-situ measurements. And we use this facility, and we uh, have made the profiles. You can see this is the payload, which is used for the profiling. Uh, of uh, which uh, of uh, black carbon and which gave uh, the uh, altitude distribution of the aerosol black carbon over the central part of india basically from hyderabad uh, up to an altitude of about 10 kilometers this observation we repeated and confirmed the uh, inferences and we could see that there are layers of enhanced uh, uh, aerosols, basically the layers of enhanced black carbon concentrations present in the atmosphere. And uh, through radiative transfer calculation, we could estimate the radiative heating at different layers. And we had the measurements of temperature also on board uh, the, uh, 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 this balloon bond platform. So we could make the measurements of temperature profiles. And we could see that wherever the absorbing aerosol like black carbon shows an enhancement, the atmosphere is becoming more stable and uh, where it traps more absorbing aerosols and making their own home. So we posed a question that do absorbing aerosol build their own homes up in the atmosphere? Because you can see that there are layers of aerosols of absorbing aerosols present in the atmosphere. So this, uh, this shows that aerosol layer is not confined to the, uh, the first three kilometers, even at higher altitude. So uh, also it presents. So during the Southwest, the Swami experiments, Ministry of Earth Sciences, uh, has brought an, a, a jointly uh, collaborated on the, the airborne measurements over Indian region. So uh, uh, the under this program, uh, uh, there was an airborne measurements were carried out using the farm aircraft from uh, UK over the Indian region as part of the Swami collaborative experiment. From that, there, there are some interesting experiment, uh, observations, which is uh, which has a direct relevance to the balloon bone observations are also found. We could see that exactly at this high uh, altitude of about five kilometer or so, it is not only the black carbon, even the other aerosol species also shows an enhancement over this region. So uh, this shows the need of such platforms, the chemical composition of altitude distribution of the chemical composition measurements. You can see that uh, there is a distinctly different pattern in the chemical composition, altitude distribution of the chemical composition. If you look at the lower atmosphere, there is an organic dominated system in the first two kilometer, which changes to a sulfate dominant system when it goes to the higher altitudes in the atmosphere. So this posed a lot of new questions about the vertical dis uh, distribution of aerosol species in the atmosphere and more observations and uh, programs are required to understand the uh, uh, details of these uh, observations. So now we, we have seen that the aerosols uh, uh, over this region is uh, especially during the pre-monsoon time is present at a higher altitude and it is not only present over the Indian uh, landmass, even uh, over the uh, uh, the plain landmass, it is over, even over the high altitude region of India, like Himalayan region also, this uh, layer of aerosol exists. And uh, uh, this aerosols uh, are, uh, if you look uh, while examining the Calypso observations over the Himalayan region, we found that these aerosols are present even at uh, an altitude of about five to seven kilometers above the uh, Himalayan region. So the, uh, this uh, posed very important uh, uh, questions related to uh, the aerosol radiation interaction over Himalayas, because we know that uh, when aerosols are present over uh, the Himalayas, which is known as a third pole because of the presence of snow and glaciers, glaciated region, <coughs> You can see that there are there are two important effects. One is the direct radiative effect, and another one is the snow albedo effect. So the direct radiative effect is very important because uh, we know that on highly reflecting surfaces, uh, there is a parameter called the critical single scattering albedo, which determines whether the aerosol system warms the atmosphere or cools the atmosphere. Here I have shown the variation of the critical single scattering albedo over different surfaces. Uh, simulated use uh, uh, using from the fundamental equations, we can see that over highly reflecting surfaces like snow, the critical single scattering albedo is close to one, which shows that even a small amount of absorbing aerosol present over highly reflecting surfaces like snow, there can it can induce a warming in the atmosphere. 
and which will warm the atmosphere above the Himalayan region, which has consequence. Similarly, the aerosols, like absorbing aerosol present in the Himalayan region, when it deposit over snow, the deposition of these absorbing aerosols on highly reflecting surfaces like snow and ice significantly reduces its surface albedo. So, which is called as the snow darkening effect, which results in a positive radiative forcing at the, uh, uh, at the surface. So the direct radiative effect warms the atmosphere and the, uh, the snow albedo effect uh, warms the surface. So this enhanced warming uh, is the result of the complex positive feedback mechanism involving the thermodynamics and microphysical properties of the snowpack. We have seen here the simulations made by Warren and Wiscombe published in, a, uh, in Journal of Atmospheric Science in 1980 uh, that how this complex uh, 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 the snow properties uh, affect the uh, snow albedo forcing. The efficiency of the reduction of snow albedo due to the deposition of absorbing aerosol increase with an increase in snow effective grain size, which is shown here, thus enhancing the solar radiation absorption. So another important uh, point is actually the onset of the snow melt leads to accumulation of the absorbing aerosols to the surface, which causes further darkening of snow and warming of the uh, snowpack. So the accelerated melting caused by the absorbing aerosol can also lead to an early exposure of the underlying surfaces like uh, vegetation or the soil over the Himalayan region, which has lower albedo compared to snow, then the snow which results in an increase in the surface temperature over this region. So the, this entire feedback process is commonly known as the snow albedo feedback and it is very important uh, for the Himalayan region. So realizing the importance of uh, this uh, the uh, uh, of aerosols over the Himalayan region, we have initiated uh, the, the observations over a chain of aerosol observatories over the Himalayan region as part of this uh, program. And here we have very long measurements of uh, black carbon from the, uh, one of the high altitude station Hanley, which is situated at about 4.5 kilometer above mean sea level. And as we have seen that if you look at the uh, old season observation, uh, uh, observation of black carbon over Himalayan station, we see that during the pre-monsoon time at this higher altitude shows an enhancement, which is in line with the enhanced aerosol present at the higher altitude during pre-monsoon and the observations over the Himalayan region is go in hand in hand. If you look at different altitude levels at which the black carbon concentration at lower altitudes, uh, over the foothills of Himalayas, we can see that the winter values are high compared to pre-monsoon. As we go to the higher altitude, about two kilometer or so, we can see that the pre-monsoon enhancement is seen even at a higher altitude over Himalayas. So in this context, we have a series of measurements over Himalayas to address this issue. Uh, we are thankful to Ministry of Earth Science for providing the facilities at the Himansh Observatory for the measurements of aerosols from the, uh, at uh, the station uh, maintained by the ministry here at Himansh, where uh, which is at an altitude about four kilometer. This is the observatories uh, and the lab which we have set up for the measurement of aerosols, especially during the summer monsoon time when aerosols are getting pumped to the higher altitude. This is the region uh, during the summer time where we can see where the uh, the observatory is also located. From this, we have made measurements of the total aerosol system as well as the black carbon. And based on the offline analysis of the chemical composition of the aerosol, we found that the more than 65 percentage of the aerosol system over this northwestern part of India is contributed by mineral dust. This is also in line with what, but when we uh, the careful examination of this data shows that this mineral dust is not uh, completely transported through the long range transport. The, we know that the Himalayan region is actually is a dry region. It's like a dry desert where during the high wind conditions, significant amount of great aerosols also get generated and the snow and glacier over Himalayan region is mainly covered by uh, this uh, the mineral dust or the debris covered uh, uh, snow. So uh, the, uh, the Calypso observation also was very useful for understanding this. We have uh, observations now over a chain of uh, observatories over this region. The aerosol optical depth data is available. From this, uh, uh, as based on the methodology which I have already explained, we could estimate the dust over Himalayas, the entire Himalayas we could map. And uh, this gives very good information which can be used for simulation analysis over the 
to understand the effect of uh, aerosols uh, on the Himalayan uh, snow and glacier. So uh, this is actually, we can see that uh, during the uh, middle uh, the part of Himalayas, mid Himalayas, the effect is quite, and the northwestern part, the effect of dust is quite significant. So now based on these observations over Himalayas, we tried to understand the aerosol induced snow albedo feedbacks over the Himalayas and its implications on regional climate. We know that the spatial and temporal distributions of aerosols are affected mainly by the emission, transport, and deposition processes. So the regional meteorology has a significant role on the transport and deposition process of aerosols, as well as on the emission of dust over this uh, region. So as a first step, uh, the aerosol field are simulated uh, by uh, the model. Here we have used the regional climate model coupled with aerosols and snow albedo model. So most of the climate model shows a significant underestimation of the aerosol optical depth with respect to observation over South Asian region by a factor of two or more. So here, the top panel shows the comparison of the simulated aerosol optical depth over uh, different Himalayan station as well as different regions of uh, uh, the Indian region and compared with the uh, model simulated, Rexium simulated optical depth. So the comparison of AOD over Himalayan stations <laughs> And over the distinct parts of this uh, Indian subcontinent, when we are uh, see the model simulated AOD is showed a good agreement within the uncertainty limits. Of course, there is a slight uh, uh, overestimation in simulated AOD over the Himalayan stations, uh, uh, like Kulu, where it is due to the enhanced the dust flux. And if if you look at the uh, Indian uh, region, other part of the Indian region also, wherever the westerlies prevails and where the dust is, is quite significant. Um, the uh, it shows uh, as, as the uh, significant difference. So over the distinct regions of the Indian subcontinent, also this model uh, overestimates. So the AOD over the dust uh, dominated northwestern region uh, underestimate, uh, whereas the East India, where the biomass burning activities are dominant, uh, uh, are getting uh, it's it's uh, showing a slight overestimation. So based on this, uh, in addition to the aeros uh, the comparison of the aerosol optical that we have compared the DC mass concentration over Himalayan stations and uh, over the, some of the representative stations over the Indian landmass during uh, this the period. The simulated black carbon values are also uh, 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 showing a uh, good comparison within the uncertainty limits. With, with this confidence, we have uh, tried to understand the aerosol induced snow albedo over this region. So here we have shown the spatial distribution of the snow albedo change due to uh, total aerosols, dust as well as the black carbon over the uh, Himalayan Tibetan region. And the snow albedo, uh, if you look at, it reduces by about 0.2 to 0.3 uh, due to the deposition of uh, uh, both dust and BC. But the dust contributes significantly to the albedo reduction over the western part of the Himalayan region. Where are the southern slopes, if you see that black carbon is the dominant uh, contributor uh, in the snow albedo forcing, the snow albedo changes. So <clears throat> with this albedo change, we did the uh, radiator transfer calculation using the SNCAR model, which is coupled with the uh, regional climate model, and estimated the amount of solar energy that gets <clears throat> trapped in the snowpack due to aerosol induced reduction in snow albedo. Which is, the, which is in fact the aerosol radiative effect in snow, uh, which is shown in the right panels from the top to bottom. The top one is for the total aerosol, the middle one is for the dust, and the bottom one is for the black carbon. So the change in snow albedo due to black carbon and dust deposition and the associated feedback leads to a positive radiative effect as high as 14 <coughs> to 15 watts per meter square. Uh, so uh, the Western Himalayas and Northern Tibetan Plateau where the radiative effect is exceeding even higher than 20 watts per meter square also. So the large radi radiative effect over this region is mostly attributed to the high concentration of the impurities in the snow and also due to the high solar insulation at a higher altitude, which I have mentioned in the uh, previous also. As we go to the higher altitude, uh, the amount of photons available for interaction also will be high. So uh, the effect also will be high. So the contribution, another important point, the contribution of the dust to the total radiative effect is comparable or higher than that due to black carbon over certain regions of Himalayas. 
so uh, so uh, once uh, uh, with once we are uh, with this we are very sure that there is a significant amount of the absorption of short wave radiation to the snow pack because of the presence of the absorbing aerosols such as dust and black carbon over himalayas to to look into the climate impact basically this increase uh, is should be translated to the temperature so the increase in the short wave absorption due to the absorption of black carbon and the leads leads to the warming of snow pack and the air above which uh, causes increased snow melting and this initiates the snow albedo feedback so the spatial distribution of the change in the 2 meter air temperature uh, during the pre monsoon for the case of direct radiative effect and snow albedo effect are shown in the uh, panels here though the snow albedo effect leads to significant warming over the himalayan region and uh, in contrast the direct radiative effect cools the surface over the indian mainland uh, which uh, with the negligible effects of surface temperature over the himalayas so the cooling at the surface is basically due to the dimming effect of aerosols whereas the incoming solar radiation to the surface is reduced by the scattering and absorption but the snow albedo effect is leads to uh, a warming at the surface which i have mentioned before so the change in snow cover fraction which is shown in the uh, bottom curve uh, bottom graph uh, and the snow liquid water equivalent due to aerosol is also shown in the bottom panel uh, here we can see a significant change in the snow cover fraction by more than 20 percentage uh, along the southern slopes of uh, himalayan uh, tibetan region and these are the regions with the shallow snow pack lower altitude and thus susceptible to the advection of absorbing aerosols to a larger extent so on the backdrop of the significant effects of the direct and snow albedo forcing of aerosols on regional climate uh, now it, it is a time to have a comprehensive field experiments and modeling studies focused to the himalayan region how uh, which, which to address have to be executed to address uh, to understand the feedback processes and its implications on the uh, long term uh, uh, changes on the effect of aerosols on the himalayan region so uh, here uh, with this i will move to, uh, uh, to to the next topic where so far i was talking about the about the amount of aerosols present above the atmospheric boundary layer and its impacts on uh, the radiative effects Uh, over the indian mainland like uh, the plain region as well as over the himalayan region now uh, uh, to understand this processes in detail we need to understand uh, the uh, effect of aerosols in detail we need to understand the microphysics of the aerosols also so the airborne measurements on board the aircraft to give an excellent opportunity to understand the hygroscopicity of the aerosols the morphology of the aerosol Uh, over the indian region and some of the observations in our network also helped to have the mixing state of aerosols also so here i have shown the cloud condensation nuclei which is the fraction of aerosols which are hygroscopic hygroscopic in nature and which can act as cloud condensation nuclei uh, and its vertical profile here we can see that uh, to the uh, in contrary to the, our uh, general understanding that the dust is more hydrophobic Uh, and which is uh, less uh, uh, cesian active but when we have the measurements over the airborne measurements we found that the uh, the aerosol system over the central uh, indo-gangetic plane which is basically the varanasi is is less uh, cesian efficient compared to that over the desert region this is mainly because uh, of the presence of black carbon in the uh, uh, indo-gangetic plane uh, at all altitudes so uh, if you look at uh, the variation of the uh, ccn with respect to the total aerosol system also we can see that over the uh, eastern part of uh, the region where we have uh, uh, significant advection of uh, uh, marine aerosols present where we have a, a very linear relation but when we go to the other regions like a central uh, indo-gangetic plain as well as the northwest indian region the hygroscopicity also is varying with altitude so uh, so it is very important to have the aerosol microphysics to have the deeper understanding so uh, as well as uh, to uh, understand the indirect effect of aerosols over the, our region in addition to that we have uh, collected samples over the aircraft at different altitudes and had uh, the analysis of the morphology basically the shape of the aerosols 
So here we could uh, we have collected samples from different regions at a different altitude and segregated into two groups like aerosols in the first below two kilometer and above two kilometers to uh, have a comprehensive picture of the morphology of aerosols, especially over indo gangetic plain and the uh, Central Indian region. And we found that the irregular particles, especially during the pre-monsoon time when the dust is quite dominant, irregular particles are found to dominate the aerosol system than the spherical particles, which is a uh, uh, which is an important information because most of our radiative transfer calculations have an assumption that aerosols are more spherical in nature compared to the, uh, uh, the non-sphorosity. So the morphology, uh, even uh, during the pre-monsoon, the morphology is also of the aerosol over Indian region is also very complex, which needs to think about the uh, improvement in our uh, the uh, calculation estimations of the optical properties, as well as the radiative transfer calculation. At this time, it is I take this opportunity to remember one of the great scientists. He is no more. His uh, name is Michael Mishenko. He uh, uh, passed away in this year, who developed the T-matrix method to study the scattering by morphologically uh, complex particles. And this T-matrix method is going to be very useful uh, now uh, after understanding the change in the aerosol morphology the, 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 uh, during pre-monsoon time, which is going to have uh, improvement in our uh, estimations and understanding. So uh, another uh, thing is about the indo plane aerosols are the mixing state of aerosols. We know that aerosols are uh, present in different mixing state in the atmosphere. Aerosols are exist at, uh, uh, um, uh, means uh, immediately after the product, I mean, uh, the primary production so, or any source processes. Once aerosols are detected into the atmosphere, it, it is uh, uh, present in uh, sulfates as sulfate or the black carbon as black carbon. As it present more time in the atmosphere, different processes are taking place. Condensation of the vapors of the S16 particles like dust and black carbon leads to a core shell structure which enhance the absorption of the core black carbon which is present. So it is very important to understand the mixing state and the possible reasons for the aerosol, uh, uh, the uh, mixing state. So we have made an attempt to understand this. For that, we selected a station in the IGP outflow, basically the Bhubaneswar. We could see that the uh, black carbon, which is the, the size uh, is, of course, is seasonally changing, which is somewhere around 100 nanometer is the size. And if you see the, the, the thickness of the coating over the black carbon, if you see during the winter as well as the pre-monsoon time, there is a significant amount of coating over the existing black carbon. And when we have the simultaneous uh, analysis with the, the, the amount of the, the, the type, the species like sulfate and which is uh, organics, which is present in the atmosphere, we found that sulfate is playing a major role in the coating of aerosols uh, in the indo gangetic plane and uh, the coating is as high as 40 to 50 nanometer. So when we have 100 nanometer size particles, almost about 50 nanometer of uh, coating, which can enhance the absorbing nature of, uh, and the hygroscopicity of the aerosol present in the atmosphere. And this is also very important. So uh, over the indo gangetic plane, we have the uh, a series of observations where, <laughs> uh, which, which was very helpful to understand the uh, various uh, processes like aerosol boundary layer interaction. So here, <coughs> uh, uh, having understood the type of aerosols present in the endogangetic plane and its absorbing nature and its hygroscopicity, uh, we try to understand how aerosol boundary layer interaction and the formation of fog in the over the endogangetic plane is connected to the aerosols. So here we, uh, uh, based on our observations, we have validated the model, which is the model used is a WRF uh, chem model where the uh, model is validated over the Indian region based on the observation from the network. And <clears throat> we try to understand how the presence of aerosols affects the uh, boundary layer height. So here the, uh, the uh, uh, we have shown the diurnal variation of the boundary layer height uh, over the indo gangetic plane in the left panel where uh, the, in the presence of aerosols and in the absence of aerosol and the difference between these two will give the enhancement uh, uh, oh, the reduction in the, uh, in the planetary boundary layer height 
uh, due to the presence of aerosol. And we can find, we can see that uh, there is a significant reduction in the atmospheric boundary layer height because of the presence of aerosols uh, over the Indo-Gangetic Plain um, and West India and in the other regions also, but it is uh, regionally varying. So the mean diurnal variation of the boundary layer height simulated uh, shows that uh, uh, the importance of the presence of aerosols on the aerosol uh, uh, presence of aerosols and its interaction with the uh, radiation, how it affects the atmospheric boundary layer height. And the right uh, panel shows the non-radiative fluxes such as sensible heat flux and the latent heat flux, which are the key variables determining the exchange of energy and water vapor between the land surface and atmosphere. Here, both latent heat and sensible heat flux uh, uh, um, uh, are the sources of buoyancy and turbulence in the surface layer. So the reduced turbulence kinetic energy due to the decrease in the sensible and latent heat uh, uh, in the presence of aerosols, which lowers this boundary layer height. And this also is very important because it regionally varies because of, uh, uh, of the type of surface which is present. And uh, in general, uh, we know that uh, uh, the Indo-Gangetic Plain and western, uh, western part of India shows a significant decrease. We can see that significant decrease in the sensible heat than the latent heat compared to Eastern India and Southern India here, where the decrease in latent heat is higher than that in the sensible heat. So this change in non-radiative heat budget is manifested uh, in the change in the uh, boundary layer height. So uh, here, if you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the fluxes, the various diurnal variation of the fluxes, the different land types respond differently to the solar dimming and uh, uh, which induce large variability in the land atmosphere interaction. The soil moisture and water vapor play a key role uh, in the aerosol induced changes in the energy budget, especially in partitioning of the flux as sensible and halogen heat. So since the soil is dry in winter season, the change in sensible heat, uh, heat dominates over the change in latent heat over the Indo-Gangetic Plain and Western India, whereas the high vegetation cover over eastern and southern India retains high soil moisture content, which results in a significant decrease in the uh, latent heat. And uh, this is uh, this explains the, uh, the how the variability of uh, the, uh, uh, the boundary layer height and its response to the uh, presence of aerosols. But the important aspect is that this has a profound influence on the air quality because this aerosol radiation interaction, which reduces the boundary layer height, which enhances the amount of aerosols present in the lower atmosphere, and which leads to a positive feedback. And this positive feedback will, uh, will uh, reduce further the amount of radiation, which reaches the surface and further enhances the uh, uh, amount of aerosols. And another important positive uh, effect, uh, which is feedback is actually its effect on the relative humidity. We can see that the surface cooling due to aerosols is found to not only decrease the uh, boundary layer height, it, uh, it not only increase the amount of aerosol in the boundary layer, it increases the relative humidity also uh, in the lower atmospheric layer. So since the ambient humidity is high and temperature is very low uh, during winter and which gets uh, uh, enhanced because of its presence of the aerosol radiation interaction, uh, the increase in humidity due to this forcing will strengthen the aerosol radiation interaction uh, through the hygroscopic growth of particles. Basically, the, the amount, the aerosols, which grow to the larger sizes and which uh, interact very efficiently. And the, the here, the middle panel shows the spatial map of the correlation coefficient between the uh, enhancement in aerosol optical depth uh, due to the enhancement in relative humidity, which is due to this positive feedback. And we can, uh, the right panel shows the temporal variation of how this delta RH and delta IOD, which we can see, which goes in hand in hand. So the association between the change in the increase in aerosol optical depth and the increase in uh, relative humidity clearly indicates the significance of the aerosol influence on the moisture and its feedback process. So the aerosol boundary layer interaction prevent aerosols and water vapor from being mixed with the free troposphere air mass and thus leading to a higher aerosol concentration and relative humidity in the boundary layer. So this is also very important when we talk about the aerosol radiation interaction. And if you look at the, uh, the fog over the Indian region and its relation with aerosol forcing, we can see that here we have shown uh, the uh, fog maps obtained from the inside 3D picture and the, uh, the spatial map of the change in aerosol optical to, to aerosol forcing also. 
we can it is interesting to note that the four events are co-located with the regions where the aerosol boundary layer interactions are very significant and the aerosol radiation feedback is observed to increase the aerosol optical depth in the fog affected area during this study period so this study thus explains the occurrence of widespread fog over indo gangetic plain than in any other regions of the indian subcontinent and the aerosol boundary layer interactions have significant implications on the mitigation of aerosol conditions over south asia during winter and <clears throat> after uh, talking about a lot about the aerosol properties over the indian region let us have a look uh, at the aerosol uh, uh, distributions over the oceanic regions around uh, the indian subcontinent we have uh, extensive campaign mode observations over the oceanic region above around the indian subcontinent here we i have shown the parameters which are relevant for aerosol radiative forcing like aerosol optical depth and single scattering albedo over the oceanic regions around the indian subcontinent and there are several scientific publications from this uh, campaign which is known as the integrated campaign for aerosol gases and radiation budget which has happened over the indian region which is uh, planned and executed over the indian region in different phases uh, in 2006 in 2009 focusing on different science problems and in very recently uh, in 2018 too and several publications also came out and one of the most important outcome of this uh, study is actually the distinctly different behavior of the two oceanic regions around the indian subcontinent like arabian sea and uh, the bay of bengal if you look at the absolute value of radiative forcing which is shown in the top panels uh we can uh, see that it is respond mostly to the abundance of aerosol present in the atmosphere but if you look at the aerosol radiative forcing efficiency you can see that <coughs> the top of the atmospheric radiative of efficiency is higher uh, over arabian sea but when it comes to the atmospheric absorption it is higher over bay of bengal which shows that the bay of bengal aerosols uh, are compared is, uh, is are 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 more absorbing in nature compared to the arabian sea and there is a uh, east west gradient which exists in the aerosol induced heating over the oceanic regions around india so uh, i mentioned that this campaign is uh, still continuing and uh, uh, we uh, we know that the uh, the aerosol system over this region if you look at from space the the pattern is uh, is quite regular but if you look at the the long term trend it is showing an increasing trend over this region and uh, with this increasing trend and if you look at the different uh the contribution of uh, different species as i have uh, shown in the earlier uh, graph we could retrieve the dust aerosol optical depth over oceanic region and we found that the aerosol optical depth is mainly the aerosol uh, abundance is mainly contributed by the dust Uh, like uh, during the uh, pre monsoon time like as we have seen over the indian region so if you look at over the indian region the winter time it is more of anthropogenic aerosol system is more of anthropogenic in nature whereas during the pre monsoon time it is more of uh, dominated by the natural dust uh, dominated system so uh, to understand this the amount of aerosols which is getting transported from the continents to the oceanic region we have uh, recently uh, conducted a campaign uh, uh, over the arabian sea and indian ocean uh, we are very thankful to the ministry of earth science uh, for providing the platform and we especially thank the national center for polar and oceanic research uh, uh, the ncpor for uh, giving uh, an excellent support for conducting this experiment this is the team which has participated in this campaign over uh, the oceanic region uh, which i have mentioned this was the crew is track and uh, several uh, scientific uh, experiments were conducted on board which are of first of its kind we have made observations using lidars we have a, we have set up an excellent aerosol laboratory on board uh, the sagar kenya and made uh, measurements over different parts of the uh, oceanic region and one of the excellent results which has come out of this is actually the presence of the new particle formation in the south asian outflow and this is uh, just published in uh, atmospheric environment we can see that as we move away from uh, uh, from the uh, continental region to the far oceanic region you can see the presence of ultra fine particles in the nucleation mode which is basically the secondary aerosols for, formed due to the new uh, by the new particle formation and here in the bottom graph we can see that there is a prominent mode which exists in, in the nucleation uh, size regain 
So this nucleation, the new particle formation, uh, basically uh, the secondary aerosol formation has a profound influence on the uh, indirect effect of aerosol. We had observations of the cloud condensation nuclei over this uh, region. We found that whenever there is nucleation events which is happening over the oceanic region, uh, associated with that, there is a reduction in the CCN efficiency, which has important implications in the indirect effect of aerosols. So uh, uh, the more detailed analysis of this data set is in progress. So we will be uh, coming. This result is very recently published in the atmospheric chemistry and physics uh, thing. So having explained a lot about the aerosols over the Indian region, the Himalayan region, its re interactions with radiation, its aerosol boundary interaction, the aerosols over the oceanic region, uh, around the uh, Indian subcontinent. Uh, now, uh, what is the future directions? Uh, the, most of the studies which is focused on our region is mainly focused on aerosol radiation interaction so far. But if you look at the aerosol uh, hydrological uh, interaction, we need to understand the microphysics of the aerosols in detail. And uh, so uh, the future direction, uh, based on the experience which we gained, uh, we feel that in a doable way we can uh, we can uh, we can do that. Uh, that the uh, the next step is to understand the aerosol microphysics over the Indian region in a in a larger uh, perspective. So though isolated measurements are uh, reported from different uh, locations, but we have to uh, have a comprehensive approach to the way in which we have done for understanding the optical properties of aerosols as well as for the uh, radiative forcing um, studies uh, we need to understand the aerosol microphysics uh, to understand the aerosol water interaction this is the one uh, which determines the indirect effect of an, uh, aerosols and the aerosol hydrological uh, interaction and another important thing which has come out of this, uh, which needs to be addressed in the near future, is on the vertical res resolved measurements of the aerosol chemistry. Because the, as aerosols are pumped to the higher altitude, now we have good information on the amount of dust and some information about the black carbon. And but we need to have a comprehensive picture of the uh, aerosol composition, which need uh, calls for uh, dedicated uh, uh, aircraft for our region uh, to have such measurements. Of course, another major thing which is now in progress is on the aerosols over land from space-borne sensors, which is, of course, a technological challenge, which is now a lot of discussion is going on uh, and which I'm sure that which will also come up. And finally, uh, to address the aerosols and regional climate like uh, monsoon and so on. So finally, I, I should thank my, uh, I'm very thankful to my colleagues uh, uh, who uh, for uh, the uh, the excellent team spirit and the hard work which they have uh, made to complete this, uh, to uh, execute this, uh, the experiments at uh, different uh, parts of the country. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I, I profusely thank them for their team spirit, dedication and hard work. I, I am very thankful to the, my collaborators spread over the length and breadth of the India for their unconditional support for the implementation of this program. And uh, last, last but not the least, to my mentors for the timely advice, critical comments to improve the quality of my research and their wholehearted encouragement. Thanks to all of you for the, the personal, uh, for the patient listening. And uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Suresh Babu. That was a very comprehensive talk containing the observations of radiative properties of aerosol over India and around, spanning our last two to three decades. Very informative. Thank you so much. And uh, it has attracted uh, so many questions, in fact, but due to time constraint, I could uh, incorporate a few uh, which is available to you through the chat option. So kindly read the questions and answer. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you, Vinu, uh, for uh, the excellent arrangement and uh, posting these questions. I will read out the questions and uh, respond to that. While calculating the long-term trend in anthropogenic influence, how did you calculate it? Or it can be obtained from any uh, direct data? Yeah. Here, actually, uh, we have made measurements of uh, uh, spectral aerosol optical depth uh, 
basically the aerosol optical depth at a different wavelengths. So uh, the spectral variation respond to the size distribution of the aerosols. So basically, the steep spectra corresponds to uh, uh, the uh, it corresponds to finer aerosols, and the flat spectra corresponds to the uh, dominance of uh, larger sized aerosols in the aerosol system. So from this uh, spectral space steepness can be uh, estimated by estimating the angstrom exponent, which is a very classical uh, method, where uh, the, uh, the higher values of angstrom exponent corresponds to the dominance of finer aerosols. And we have seen uh, a, an increasing trend in the angstrom exponent of the uh, aerosol spectral optical depth, which corresponds to the anthropogenic influence. Of course, there are direct measurements of other aerosol composition, which is now coming up, which will also further answer these uh, questions in the coming years, like uh, uh, other anthropogenic species present in the atmosphere. But this is the method which we have used in this study. What model we need to use for the computation of regional radiative foreseeing and if we, if we don't have water absorption band in the sun photometer, how we can calculate and take the single scattering albedo for radiative foreseeing. So uh, the, for the uh, uh, computation of regional radiative forcing, based on the observations of the aerosol properties, we need to have region-specific and uh, season-specific aerosol models. So uh, the, one of the primary objective of this particular program called aerosol radiative forcing over India is to generate aerosol models for uh, region-specific and season-specific aerosol models. And uh, uh, we have seen that in our paper, which is uh, which I have shown the results are published in a paper in climate dynamics. And we, there we have uh, shown that how the model changes from season to season. So uh, not only for radiative for uh, estimation, even for the retrieving of aerosols from the space bound measurements of radiance also, we have to have accurate uh, aerosol models derived from observations. So that is the importance of the observations which I have shown here, because we have to have a uh, very concrete model because the, the aerosol properties mainly depends on the type of air masses. When air mass is continental in nature, the, we can say that what is the fraction of different species. When air mass is purely marine, we can see that what are the different types and which year by year it repeats with mild, minor changes. So based on observation, we can come out with such aerosol models which can be used in uh, ready to transfer models and uh, uh, ready to transfer computation and calculate aerosol radiative forcing. Regarding the sun photometer band, the, uh, the band at 935 nanometer can be used for the estimation of water vapor. In the multivalent radiometer, we have, uh, we have measurements at 850, 935, and 1025. From that, we estimate the water vapor present in the atmosphere and uh, which can be estimated. Then how to monitor and differentiate positive radiative forcing and negative radiative forcing through remote sensing techniques and data. <clears throat> this is also, this is an important question. Uh, the, uh, the, the, positive, the, the positive and negative radiative forcing is important when we talk about the top of the atmospheric radiative forcing. And from the remote sensing data, uh, especially like uh, uh, the data from Ceres or from the uh, our own satellite, the, uh, the SCARAB onboard uh, megatropics can be used to estimate the top of the atmospheric radiative forcing. There are several literature now available uh, in the estimation of radiative forcing uh, at the top of the atmosphere over the Indian region based on um, the uh, space-based observation. And from that, uh, the positive radiative forcing means uh, there is a net uh, absorption of radiation within the Earth atmosphere system. We know that, you know, in the atmosphere, the radiative forcing is always positive. Uh, it cannot be negative. Either it can be zero or positive. And at the surface, it will be the presence of aerosol in the short wave region. The presence of aerosol always causes a cooling, uh, other than the surface albedo forcing, which I have, I have explained in the Himalayan region. At the top of the atmosphere, the forcing is always uh, it, uh, the forcing changes with the type of the aerosols. The positive forcing leads to warming in the atmosphere, earth atmosphere system. You need to say very clearly earth atmosphere system, whereas the negative uh, forcing at the top of the atmosphere leads to cooling. And uh, the space bound observations can be an effective tool uh, to do that. And now it is, uh, there are several. We also have published some uh, papers based on the space bound observations. How much scattering sulfate aerosol would offset the BC absorption in radiative forcing? 
this is a, uh, an important question. If we see uh, the uh, our paper, uh, climate dynamics, it is well explained. If you know, we know, we all know that the black carbon is always co-emitted with the organic aerosols. And we have seen that when we did a speciated analysis of the heating due to black carbon and organic carbon, we found that <laughs> the the heating due to uh, uh, the black carbon is normally getting offset by uh, the amount of organics, which is quite large in, uh, you know, very, very large amount of organics, which is present in the atmosphere. And the left out means the radiative forcing is mostly controlled by the amount of sulfate aerosols after this, uh, uh, you know, uh, balance action. So uh, uh, this, uh, in this context, the sulfate aerosol uh, will not offset the black carbon, but actually the black carbon offset is mainly happening of course, it offset, but the offset we can see in both in organic and black carbon, and sulfate is acting above that uh, in a cooling uh, to cool the atmosphere. So this is well explained. Uh, probably uh, you may refer to our climate dynamics paper in 2016 uh, for the more details. How we can calculate AOD from uh, total spectral solar irradiance measurement? From the total spectral solar irradiance measurement, uh, we cannot uh, accurately measure, measure aerosol optical depth uh, at the surface. For that, see, we need to have uh, the direct radiation uh, uh, at, at a specific banks because there are several absorption which is happening not only in the earth atmosphere in the you know the van hofer lines and which makes uh, variability in the received signal and the the uh, sun photometric measurements uh, basically uh, of the aerosol optical depth we have certain assumptions that uh, the the measurements the the variability is mainly due to the presence of aerosols and other gases present in the atmosphere and there is a homogeneity assumed so uh, uh, the broadband uh, calculation is uh, it, it is a tricky thing which was happened which was done in the past uh, but now uh, we need to have uh, you know very band uh, measurements uh, uh, narrow band measurements uh, to uh, accurately measure aerosol optical depth yeah, yeah. so that's all the questions uh, you have answered them very well thank you and thank you for spending your valuable time with MOES webinar so thank you. we thank you for your uh, talk with uh, this uh, series. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Vinu, and uh, all others for uh, supporting uh, this uh, presentation. And uh, of course, I took more time and I was rushing through uh, things. <laughs> I should have given two talks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> A very yeah. good, a lot of information. I think you should yeah. consider writing a book comprising all the radiative. Uh, I'll, I'll, <laughs> it will be very useful for the community, I guess. This is my personal uh, opinion. Yeah. Sure, sure. I'll uh, do thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.